called to session 4 of the chapter motion in a plane after knowing how to do mathematical operations on vectors we will be starting with the motion in a plane concepts here right first of all we will be dealing with a concept called position vector right so we will be writing a mathematical uh, form of a position vector we know that the position of a particle is expressed from the point of reference right for example if you are standing at any position the position of yourself will be explaining from the nearby point of reference for example if there is a bus stand so you say that you are standing at 500 meters from the bus stand so bus stand becomes the point of reference in a similar manner if you want to represent a position right so let me call this is a position and uh, let me call this as p no right from the point of reference this point of reference becomes let me take it as origin and i will be taking the axis that is x axis and this is what we say now here y axis and you know how to express the position from the point of reference right for example it is 1 it is 2 and it is 3 you will be saying that uh, you will be writing uh, the coordinates like this 3 the first number gives how much far it is from along the x axis so if i am speaking about the y axis 1 2 3 4 then it will be p 3 4 these are the position coordinates right so 3 along x axis and 4 along y axis so this this is how we represent the position but we want to represent it vectorly and that vector is called as position vector we have already studied that position vector is a vector drawn from point of reference to the position of the particle okay where is the point of reference origin is the point of reference and to the particle and this vector is called as position vector okay let me take like this this vector is called as a position vector and it is always represented by r vector do you understand position vector is always represented by r vector so r vector becomes the position vector now here right okay now how to write this okay let me tell you the position vector can be represented like this now here right so that is r vector shall i write like this r vector is equal to right so i will be writing the position in terms of uh, x axis and y axis right so we are discussing the motion in a plane right so there are two coordinates we will be expressing the motion in terms of two dimensions x and y okay come on tell me now this is the position at distance 3 along x axis so shall i write like this r vector is equal to what is along x axis how much is the unit now here three units and along x axis the unit vector what we use is i cap okay shall i write like this three i cap right so plus right this is plus now here y axis you know the unit vector along y axis j cap now here right how much units it is now here four units let me take four j cap right this is how we represent the position vector right by this we can say that okay the position at this uh, position p now here, right the uh, object is at that position now here, right so that is r is equal to 3i plus 4j in general we will be writing like this that is r vector is equal to shall i take along x axis what is the unit now here? let me take generally that is x now here, right x i cap plus y j cap this is the general expression for position vector so what is x now here x is component of r component of r along x axis right so shall i take y now here let me uh, take this capillary x capillary y because there will not be any confusion when i take the small letter x now here, right so that is y is component of r along which axis now here y axis so this is how we represent the position vector do you remember that is r vector is equal to x i cap plus y cap y j cap x is how much units along x axis y is how much units along y axis so this is how the representation of a position vector now here right now let us move on to the second vector that is displacement vector the second kind of vector what we have already discussed that is displacement vector let me write it mathematically now here displacement vector is denoted by delta r cap right okay let me tell you that if you are standing at this position from bus stand right i already told you this position let me take it as p1 right you 
you, you moved from P1 to P2. Let me take this position as what we say here, P2, right? And always we are referring from the point of reference, right? For example, you got a call from your friend and you said that, okay, you are standing at 500 meter from the bus stand, right? So, and before your friend comes, you just move to the other place. Again, if your friend calls you, again, you will be explaining the position from the point of reference itself, right? So, always the positions are expressed in from the point of reference and this bus stand becomes original here, right? Okay, let me express this along the uh, x-axis. Let me take and this is along what we say here, y-axis. I have already told you how to express the position. Position can be expressed in terms of coordinates. Let me take this is y coordinates. Okay, what is this uh, p1? Let me take this p1 as x1, y1. Okay, this is at a distance x1 here and uh, this is at a distance y1 here, right? Let me take like this, right? So x1, y1, right? Okay, let me take the position coordinates as x2, y2 now here, right? So this is the distance. If I'm taking, this is the distance x2 and uh, let me take, uh, this is the distance. So what shall I take now here? y2, right? This becomes y2. So you have moved from p1 to p2, right? What is displacement vector? We have already studied that displacement vector is a vector drawn from point uh, from the initial position to final position. What is the initial position? P1 and what is the final position now here? P2, right? Okay, how to write now here? Let me write, for example, uh, first of all, let me take it with the numerical example, then I will be going with the general example now here, right? For example, if I am taking this position as uh, 3, 4 and this position as 5, what we say now here? 8. Then along the x-axis, what is the distance moved? Earlier it was 3, then now it is 5. So what is the distance moved along the uh, x-axis now here? 5 minus 3, that is 2 meters, right? 2 units along x-axis. What is the position of the particle moved along y-axis now here, right? Here it is 8 and here it is 4. So how much units uh, did it move now here? It moved 4 units now here, right? So 8 minus 4 means always we represent like this now here, right? So how much position did it, the particle move now here, right? From P1 to P2, shall I say like this? That is delta R cap, this is how we represent the displacement vector, right? So delta R cap is equal to, shall I say like this? X2 minus X1, X2 minus X1, along which axis? X axis. And unit vector along X axis is, what shall I take now here? I cap plus what is along y axis now here this is y2 and this is y1 we need to subtract here right so y2 minus y1 shall i say like this y2 minus y1 along which axis now here y axis and we represent the unit vector along y axis as j cap right so x2 minus x1 i cap plus y2 minus y1 j cap okay let me give i have already told you one example 3, 4 and this is phi 8. How do you represent? That is, this is a delta R cap. Delta R cap is equal to along x axis. X axis means the first number is always along x axis. 5 minus 3. What is 5 minus 3? 2. Okay, let me write like this. 5 minus 3 I cap plus 8 minus 4 J cap. Right? So, what do you get now here? That is 2 I cap plus 4 J cap. And this is the vector. Which vector now here? Displacement vector. Right? Okay. Let me write it uh, generally now here. That is delta R cap is equal to x2 minus x1 I cap plus y2 minus y1 J cap. Okay. Always the difference is expressed like this delta. Okay. Let me take like this delta x I cap plus y2 minus y1 that is delta y. Right. So I will be using delta whenever there is a difference now here. Right. So delta y what do I get now here? J cap that is delta R cap and this is how we represent which vector now here? Displacement vector. Right. So do remember. So delta R cap is equal to delta x i cap plus delta y j cap right this is how we represent the position vector and a displacement vector in mathematical form in vector form now here right now let us move on to the equations of motion okay we will be writing about equations of motion okay now let us take equations of motion we know there are three equations of motion the first one is v is equal to u plus at. The second one is S is equal to ut plus 
half e t square. The third one is v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s. So, what are these equations called? These equations are called equations of motion. But now what we will be studying is equations of motion in a plane that too. How many dimensions it has now here? Two dimensions. Okay, let us take now here. Equations of motion in a plane. Right. So, one thing what we need to understand is these three equations are called as equations of motion and these three equations are applied only when, do you understand this, only when acceleration is constant, do you understand, right. We can apply these three equations only when acceleration is constant, right. So, when acceleration is constant, we can apply these three equations, okay. Now, let us move on to the equations of motion in a plane over here, right? Okay. Now, let us consider, consider a body moving in a plane. Let us, right? Consider a body moving in a plane, right? For example, this is a plane. The body is moving. How it is moving? It is moving in a plane with constant, what we say here, acceleration with the constant acceleration. So, what is the constant acceleration? Let me take it as A because acceleration is a vector quantity. So, we will be writing A vector, right? Okay. Consider a body moving in a plane with constant acceleration A. Let u be which velocity now here? Initial velocity means initial speed now here. Let me take now here. Let u be which velocity now here? Initial velocity and v b which velocity now here final velocity we have studied this about initial velocities and final velocity this is the beginning velocity this is at the last velocity what we have right okay let u be initial velocity and v be final velocity after what we say now here time t after time t what is the initial velocity velocity now what is the final velocity v right initial velocity u and final velocity is v okay just i introduce to you uh, what are these equations? Okay, let me write these equations in terms of uh, two dimensions now here, right? Okay, let me begin with the first one that is the first vector. So, what is the formula? That is V, it is a vector quantity, V is equal to U, it is a vector quantity plus A, acceleration is a vector, T is a scalar. So, what is the equation? V is equal to U plus A T, but we will be writing it in terms of two dimensions now, right? Okay, now let me write V is equal to U plus A T in terms of two dimensions now, right? So, whenever we want to write that, let me take that in terms of uh, uh, component forms now, right? Okay, let me write like this in uh, component form, okay? How to write this in component form, right? So, there are two components, there are two axes, X axis and Y axis and this axis will be applied only to the vectors because it has directions now here, right? Okay, let me take along the x axis first that is v x that is equal to, right? So, let me write that at the bottom here, right? Like this v x equal to u x plus this is also vector a x into what we say right here t, right? This is along x axis, that the same equation but along x axis. So, v x is the component of v along x axis, u x is a component of u along x axis, right? Along. Okay, now let me write this along y axis, v y is equal to u y plus acceleration y into t, right. So, we go to two equations. So, why did you get two? Because it is of two dimensions, right. Okay, the same thing I have expressed in terms of components, x axis and y axis, right. That is what we call it as equations of motion in a plane, right. In a plane, so these are the equations of motion, right. Okay, let, let me move on to the next one, that is the second one. So, what is that now here? S is equal to, S is a vector quantity, displacement, right. S is equal to u t, t is a scalar plus half, a is a vector, half. So, S is equal to u t plus half a t square, okay. T is scalar, that is why I have not written arrow mark on it, but these are vectors, let me write like this. S is equal to u t plus half a t square. Right. So, let me write this in terms of component forms in uh, component form. Okay. Let me write this in component form now. Right. Okay. Come on tell me what is this? That is the displacement. How much it displaces? Right. So, displacement along x axis. Shall I take directly x? I need, need not to write s x. Right. So, instead of this, 
So since it is a component, since it is a displacement, directly I can write like this, right? Whenever there is a displacement, let me write like this. Okay. What is component of u along x-axis? Ux. What is uh, there is no component because it is a scalar, right? Ut plus half. What is component of a along x-axis? Ax. So let me like this. Ax. What we say here? T square. I already told you this can be written as s x, but I will not be writing that, generally we will be writing like this because x itself is the displacement, right? Okay, come on, tell me along y axis, shall I write like this? That is yes, y, but I will not be writing this, I will be writing it as y itself, displacement, x and y are the displacements that we have seen when I told you about the position vector, that is equal to. What is u along x, y axis? Ui, ui t plus, what shall I write now here? Half, along y axis, ay. So t is a scalar quantity, there is no need, need to write now, right? So these are the component form of this vector. S is equal to ut plus half it is square. So these are the two equations. Let me go with the third equation, right? Okay, let me take like this, the third equation. Third equation is like this, right? The third equation is v square, that is vector, v square is equal to u square plus 2a, yes, here, all the terms are vector itself, right? So v square is equal to u square plus 2as, right? Let me write this equation in component form. Okay, let me write in terms of component now here, right? Okay, what is component of v along x-axis? Vx square is equal to component of u along x-axis? Ux square plus 2 component of a, ax. Component of, yes, yes, is the displacement along x-axis. Let me take it as x itself. I already told you, sx will not be writing, we will be writing x now, right? Okay. Along y-axis, what is component of y? Vy square is equal to component of u along y-axis. Uy square plus 2, what shall I write now here? Ay. And uh, yes, along y-axis, let me take it as y now. So these are the components, right, of this equations along x-axis and y-axis. And these are the equations of motion in a plane, that is equations of motion in two dimensions. In motion in a plane, we have two motions to study, okay. The chapter is motion in a plane, right. So in this motion in a plane, there are two types of motion that you need to study. The first one is projectile motion. The first one is projectile motion. And the second one is circular motion. So these are the motion in a plane. There are many motion in a plane. For your study, you need to study these two motions. One is projectile motion and another one is circular motion. Okay. We will be studying about these two in detail. Okay. Let me begin with the first one. That is projectile motion here. Okay. Let me start with the first one. Projectile motion. Okay. What is projectile motion? Before we go with uh, what is projectile motion, let us understand what is the meaning of projectile. Okay. First of all, let us understand what is the meaning of projectile. Projectile is like this, right? For example, if I am considering this is an object. For example, let me consider this is an object, right? Whenever I throw this object up, that object will become projectile, right? So an object which is thrown in air, that object is called as a projectile, right? Okay, let me tell you like this. This is projectile is an object, an object thrown in what we say here, air. So first of all, you need to understand what is meant by projectile. It is an object thrown in air which moves, which moves under the action of action of gravity alone okay see here an object thrown in air which moves under the action of gravity alone is called projectile is called projectile okay do you understand what is the meaning of projectile projectile is it is an object thrown in air which moves under the action of gravity alone Right. If I am throwing the object, only the gravitation is acting on it. Right. The gravitational force is acting on it now. Right. So, which moves under the action of gravity alone is called as a projectile. Right. For example, how does a body move if you throw in air? Right. If you throw an object in air, it moves like this. Right. 
so if a body is thrown in air it moves at a certain height and comes back and this kind of motion is called as which motion here projectile motion right so whenever the object is moving only the gravitational force is acting on the object it moves under the action of gravity alone there is no other force this side or this side right and when, when i throw an object i'm not blowing anything and i'm not putting any force on that object right if simply i throw an object only a gravitational force is acting on it it always move in this path right okay you the kick when you kick the football now here right so it also travels a projectile motion over here when you play a volleyball that also travels a projectile motion anything right if you throw any object it follows a projectile motion like this itself right so do understand whenever an object is thrown right if your object is thrown like this it will come back here itself and this kind of motion is called as projectile motion do understand this is a motion in which an object is thrown in air and which moves under the action of gravity alone that motion is called as projectile motion and that particle is called as a projectile okay first thing be clear what is the meaning of projectile next i will be using another one word here that is called as trajectory i will be using the word called trajectory trajectory okay let me write what is the meaning of trajectory trajectory is the path path followed followed by the projectile the path followed by the projectile is called what we say in here trajectory okay do you understand this this is a word that you need to understand what is the meaning of trajectory it is the path followed by the projectile right for example if i am throwing an object and it follows like this and this path which is followed that is called as trajectory and the object is called as projectile right so do remember these two words the object is called as a projectile and the path which is followed that is called as a trajectory right do understand these two are the words i will be using again and again in this uh, motion here okay let me take an example and uh, let me check it out okay there is a ball here right if you kick this ball it moves like this it reaches at this point and it comes like this now here right okay so if i am uh, considering like this and uh, if this is a projectile and this is a trajectory let me take along uh, let me take put the axis here like this let me take a uh, this is a uh, x axis and uh, let me consider this is what we say here y axis right okay i am kicking a ball it moves in a projectile motion and comes to back to the ground itself now here right okay now what we need to understand here is the object is called as a projectile and the path traveled or the path traced is called as a trajectory right so when you kick the ball or when you throw it we are giving certain velocity to it right so that velocity is tangential and that velocity we represent it as u u is the initial velocity what we are giving to that object right we are giving we are throwing like this so what is the initial velocity you are given here that is u vector here right so this u vector is the initial velocity of the projectile and if you are going with the initial velocity of the projectile let me take there is an angle which is formed here let me call it as theta and that angle is called as angle of projection that angle is called as angle of projection do remember this is the third word that you need to remember right so for this projectile trajectory this is angle of projection right so what is angle of projection this is the angle between it is the angle between direction direction of projection okay the angle between direction of projection and the horizontal surface and the horizontal surface okay do you understand this surface is called as horizontal always this is called as horizontal and this surface is called as vertical vertical right this is vertical this is horizontal this is horizontal surface so let me take angle between direction of propagation what is the direction of propagation so this is the direction of propagation so this direction of propagation along the horizontal that angle is called as angle of projection that is angle between direction of propagation and the horizontal surface is called angle of projection is called angle of projection do understand this now right so what is angle of projection angle between angle of projection with the horizontal 
right? For example, if I, if I throw like this, if I'm throwing, right? If I'm throwing like this, this angle is called as angle of projection, right? Always the angle is measured from the horizontal surface and this is called as angle of projection. So we have learned two, three definitions. What is projectile? What is trajectory? And what is angle of projection? So this angle is called as angle of projection. Now, when we discuss about uh, projectile motion, there are three parameters that we need to understand. Okay, what are the, those three parameters? Let me check it out. Right. So projectile motion has three parameters. The first parameter is about. Let me take my hand. There are three parameters. The first parameter is about maximum height. Maximum height. We need to know about the maximum height. The second parameter is horizontal range. Okay, let me take the second. Let me take time of flight. Horizontal range. Let me take the third one as time of flight. Now, right? Okay. Horizontal range. Let me explain third one. That is uh, time of flight. So, whenever we discuss about a projectile motion, we will be discussing about these three parameters: maximum height, horizontal range, and time of flight. Okay. What is maximum height? Maximum height is always represented by H here, right? Let me take it as H. So, what is maximum height? It is the maximum height reached by a projectile, the maximum height reached by a projectile during its motion. See here, maximum height reached by a projectile during its motion is called is called maximum height. So what is maximum height? Okay, that is the maximum height reached by a projectile during its motion. Come on, tell me, this is a projectile motion. What is the maximum height reached? This is the maximum height reached, right? Always the height is measured from the horizontal surface and this distance is called as maximum height and we represent it by h. This is the first parameter, right? What is maximum height? That is maximum height. Who is reaching that maximum height? Reached by a projectile. What is projectile? Object thrown in air which moves under the action of gravity alone, right? So this is maximum height reached by a projectile during its motion, right? So during its motion, what is the maximum height reached? That is called as maximum height and it is represented by capital letter H, right? Okay, let us move on to the second one. That is a horizontal range. Right. So let me write this. This is horizontal distance covered by a projectile. Okay, see so yeah, it is the horizontal distance covered by a projectile during its motion. During its motion. Right. So is called horizontal range or simply range. Right. So since it is horizontal, we will be writing it as horizontal range and it is denoted by capital letter R here, right? Okay, means what is the horizontal distance? Okay, this is the vertical distance, height now here, right? Now I'll be taking horizontal distance, right? If I throw a chalk piece like this now here, right? So at a, a what distance it will fall? The distance covered, that is called as horizontal distance. And what is the horizontal distance here? This is the horizontal distance. This is the distance covered by the projectile and this is called as horizontal range. Simple. Maximum height. What is the maximum height reached by the projectile? How much far? Did it fall over here, right? There is a horizontal distance covered by the projectile. That horizontal distance is called as horizontal range and we represent it by R. This is the second parameter. Okay. Let me go with the time of flight. That is T. Okay. The name itself says it is the time taken for the flight. Flight means what now here? It will go and it will reach at that point here, right? So what is the team time taken by a, an object to reach at this position, right? How much time did it take now here, right? So that T is called as the time of flight, right? What is the time required for that flight now here to reach at that point now here, right? Okay. So let me take like this. Time of flight is time taken by a projectile. Time taken by a projectile to reach the ground to reach the ground time taken by the projectile to reach the ground after it was projected after it was projected okay see here time taken by the by a projectile to reach the ground after it was projected is called time of flight is called time of flight simple see 
time taken by a projectile to reach the ground after it was projected. So what is the time taken by the object to reach the ground? How much time did it take? Right. So that is that time taken is called as time of flight and we be represented by T. So capital T. What is capital T? It is a time taken by the projectile to reach the ground. Right. If I throw the object after two seconds, if it reach here, then two seconds become time of flight. Right. Simple. It is time taken by a projectile to reach the ground. Right. It must reach to the ground itself after it was projected. Right. So after it was projected, what is the time? That time is called as time of flight. So these are the three parameters we need to understand about the projectile motion. One is maximum height, horizontal range and another one is time of flight. Now let us derive what is the expression for the trajectory of a projectile. Okay, let us take this derivation. That is uh, derivation of, let me take like this, derivation of expression for, derivation of expression for trajectory what is trajectory path followed by the projectile right derivation of expression for trajectory of a what we say now here projectile so let us write what is the equation derivation of equation for trajectory of a projectile right this question carries five marks now here right again this can also be asked like this show that show that the trajectory trajectory of a projectile of a projectile is a parabola is a parabola okay see here. derivation of expression for trajectory of projectile or it can also be asked like this show that the trajectory of a projectile is a parabola right okay the trajectory is a par parabola and uh, we need to show it now here right for example let me tell you what is the meaning of parabola right uh, what is this term here this is called as a circle right so this is circle and uh, if i'm taking like this this kind of shape that kind of shape is called as parabola right as it is circle and we call it as square and this is called as a parabola right so parabola may be like this or uh, the parabola may also be like this like this and these all things you have studied and these structures are called as parabola right so whenever we discuss about uh, the parabola what is the equation of parabola we need to understand right before we start with this the equation of the parabola is like this now here right y is equal to ax plus bx square if the equation is like this so this equation is called as equation of what we say now here parabola this equation is called as equation of parabola right we know if this is a straight line what is the equation y equal to mx plus c right so do remember we will be having equation for every curve now here right if it is a straight line what is the equation y equal to mx plus c you will be learning about this in detail in the later classes first understand this also has the equation what is this equation y equal to mx plus c if i am speaking about the equation of a parabola so what is the equation of parabola you need to know that right equation is ax plus bx square so first term should contain x the second term should contain the square of the x then then the shape is always a parabola and this kind of equation is called as parabolic equation this kind of equation is called as straight line equation right okay so keeping this in mind do remember keep that equation in mind let us move ahead now right okay derivation of expression of a trajectory uh, trajectory of a projectile or show that the trajectory of a projectile is a parabola now let us move ahead now here okay let me take uh, a parabolic equation here let me take the projectile okay so let me consider like this okay in order to derive it i need a little more space now here let me check it out like this so this is a y axis so let me check like this this is which axis now here this is along x axis and this is along y axis okay let me take this is the projectile let me consider like this this is a projectile right okay see a projectile means an object thrown in air it travels this path and this path is called as trajectory and i am finding what is the equation of that now here right okay if the object is thrown and let me write its parameters now right okay let me write if the object is thrown what is this velocity this velocity is which velocity let me call this velocity as initial velocity let me take it as u right this is initial velocity and what is this angle this angle is called as angle of a projection okay let me take it as angle of projection that is theta now let me take now let me uh, write this okay if i am uh, cal calculating let me take like this 
Let me start with the derivation, right? Okay, what did I consider? Consider, consider a projectile, consider a body, okay? Consider an object, other a body thrown in air, consider an object thrown in air, thrown in air with the initial velocity, with the initial velocity. What is the initial velocity? U, we know that. Consider an object thrown in air with initial velocity. What is the initial velocity? U and, and angle of projection and angle of projection. Okay, what is the angle of projection here? Theta. Let me begin the derivation like this. Consider an object which is thrown in air. Okay, we, with which speed I'm throwing, with which velocity I'm throwing now here, that the velocity is called as u. And what is the angle made now here? That is theta. Means this is angle made by the direction of propagation with the horizontal. That angle is called as angle of projection. Okay, let me take. Consider a body thrown in air with initial velocity u and angle of projection theta. Okay, now let us move ahead down here. This is the way. Okay, in order to use the equations of motion, I need to use the equation of motion. Okay, right? So first of all, let me take like this. If it is u and this is theta, we, uh, we know how to split the vector. What is the splitting of vector called? That is called as a resolution of a vector. We have already studied this. Let me remind you once again, if this is a vector, let me take like this. If it is a, a vector, I will be splitting this vector along x-axis and y-axis. Okay, let me split this. This is uh, along uh, x-axis and uh, let me take this is along uh, y-axis. This is along x-axis. What is the angle over here? Theta. Come on, tell me what is the component of A along x-axis. That this you have studied this, right? So whenever we take the angle, this is theta, which is this side. This side becomes adjacent side, right? The opposite side becomes, this is this, the, the side which is opposite to the angle becomes opposite side, right? Okay, this is adjacent side. Whenever there is adjacent side, which trigonometric angle do you take? If it is adjacent side, we take cos theta. Okay, shall I say like this? So along this, let me take like this, along this, what shall I take now here? A cos theta, right? A cos theta. So this is along this, what shall I take now here? If this is A cos theta, this becomes A sin theta. And this we have already studied in resolution of a vector. Do you understand? Resolution of vector, a vector, splitting of a vector along x axis and y axis. If theta is here, first of all, you check which side is that now here. This side becomes adjacent side. If it is adjacent side, then it will become A cos theta. And of course, the other will become A sin theta. Do you understand? This is how we need to split the vectors, right? So this splitting of a vector is called as a resolution of a vector, okay? Now, consider an object which is thrown in air, right? With initial velocity u and angle of projection is theta. Okay, let me split that, okay? What do I get if I split this? Do you understand? If I am uh, splitting this vector like this, okay. Now, in order to split this vector, let me take like this, right? Instead, for your understanding sake, let me take like this. Let me take, uh, let me take the angle smaller so that it will be clear to you, okay? This is the angle of projection. Let me take like this. Let me split. This is which vector now here? U vector, right? Now, let me split this. This is along which axis? X axis. Let me take this is X axis and this is Y axis. Right? Okay. Let me take this is x axis and this is y axis. Let me split this vector. This vector is split like this. Let me take this. What is the component of u along x axis? This is which angle over here? Theta. This side becomes which side over here? Adjacent side. If it is adjacent side, which angle you need to take? Cos theta. Okay. Which cos theta? As it is u, shall I take it as u? Okay. Shall I take like this? u cos theta. If it is u cos theta, what will this be? This will be u sin theta. This thing you need to understand, right? This will be u cos theta and this will be u sin theta. So, what is u cos theta? u cos theta is the component of u along which axis? x axis. What is u sin theta? That is component of u along which axis now here? y axis. Do understand this, right? This splitting is called as resolution of a vector, right? The final result of these two vectors will be this vector itself. That is why we can write like this, right? Instead of taking single vector, I will be taking into two vectors here, right? That is motion in a plane. It has two axes now here, right? 
So let me take like this u cos theta and another one is u sin theta. Okay, first you understood how to begin with the derivation. So this is how we need to write something about that down here. Now let me write the equations as I need some space to write equations. Let me remove this and let me begin the derivation right. Okay, let me take like this and uh, let me begin this derivation. Let us find what is the equation for trajectory of a projectile. Okay, now I will be using using equation of motion do understand this using equation of motion which equation of motion I am using let me take I will be using the second one that is s equal to ut plus a half what we say here at square so let us say like this this is s is a vector quantity u vector quantity t scalar and a is a vector quantity right s is equal to ut plus half at square I will be using this equation of motion and I uh, will be calculating what is the equation of trajectory of a projectile okay now we know that since it is equation in two dimensions right I will be taking motion in a two dimension I need to take equations in two dimensions one is along x axis and another one is along y axis let me take like this let me split this let me split this let me write this is along which axis along x axis let me take like this this is along which axis now here along y axis why did I take two axis because this is motion in a plane motion in a plane plane is two dimensions so we will be taking two axis like this right so this is along x axis and this is along y axis let me split this okay this is the equation what we have and I am splitting this equation along two axis okay how to split we have already discussed about that okay yes is what now here displacement I need to write yes x but I will not be writing that I already told you this I will be writing it as x equal to what is this name here u u x because along which axis now here x axis t it is a scalar quantity so let me take t itself right okay now plus half what is this a a x another one is t square right shall I say like this this equation itself I write an along x axis then let me write this equation along y axis how to write this is what now here displacement let me take it as y that is equal to u along y axis ui right then t it is a scalar quantity no need to write plus half a that is a y what is t now here t square okay first of all you need to understand I am using this equation s equal to ut plus half a t square but uh, it is motion in a plane means I need to use two axes let me write along x axis along y axis and the same equation I have written into two forms because it is a motion in a two dimension two dimensional motion right this is the equation this is the equation let me write further now here right okay now what we need to understand here is what is about the acceleration right I already told you whenever you throw an object which force should act on it only the uh, gravitational force it means it moves under the action of gravity alone there will be no force along this axis do you understand whenever I throw an object there is no force along this if there is no force there is no acceleration right it will not it will not increase its velocity now here right so do understand during the projectile motion so one thing what you need to understand is during the projectile motion do you understand there will be no acceleration along x axis do you understand what is the acceleration along x axis there will be no acceleration along x axis why there will no be acceleration along x axis because there will be no force along x axis so be clear along horizontal surface there will be no acceleration why there will be no acceleration because there will be no force at all which is the force acting on the object which is thrown in uh, projectile now here when it is thrown in a uh, trajectory now here right so if the body is thrown in air which is the force acting the downward force is acting which is that now here gravity there is no force this side since there is no force along x axis then there will be no acceleration along x axis because f is equal to ma mass into acceleration right if i am not applying any force it will not be increasing its speed along x axis so let me take now here that is ax acceleration what is the acceleration now here zero okay come on tell me what is the acceleration along y axis right along y axis means along this axis what is the acceleration come on tell me y axis is here where is the force upward direction or downward direction downward direction because the gravitation force if the object is here the gravitation force acts along downward direction here right since it acts downward direction what is the acceleration along x axis shall I take it as minus g right because y axis is along this direction 
acceleration due to gravity is along this direction. So I will be taking A y is equal to minus G. Why did I take minus? Because it is a reverse of Y axis. Okay. So do understand this. Whenever there is a projectile motion, what is the acceleration along X axis? Zero because we are not applying any force on that object. What is the acceleration along Y axis? Minus G because the acceleration due to gravity is always towards downwards. Right, because the gravitational force is towards downwards, acceleration is also towards downwards. So shall I take like this, Ay is equal to minus g and this is same for all projectile motions, do remember this, right, okay. Now let me begin with the derivation, let me continue on here, come on tell me, now. if it is x, shall I take x? What is ux, ux means component of u along x axis. Okay, this is u now here. What is component of u along x axis? This is x axis. What is the component now here? u cos theta. Shall I take like this? Do you understand? This is component of u along x axis and this is component of u along y axis. Okay, now what is the component along u x axis? u x is component of u along x axis. What is that name? u cos theta and this is a t. Shall I take t now here? Right? Okay, next plus half. Come on tell me what is Ax? Ax is 0. Let me take it as 0. Alright, okay. Let me, let me make some space for it. And uh, time, we will be writing it as t square. Shall I take like this? Okay. What will be x equal to? x equal to u cos theta into t because this term will become 0 because 0 into something is 0 as this term becomes 0. Right? This term becomes 0. What do I get? x equal to u cos theta into t. Do you understand this? Right? x equal to u cos theta into t and uh, let me take this is equation number 1. Right? Okay. Now, in the similar manner, let me take the second one. Okay. This is same y equal to, come on tell me, what is u along y axis? What is u along y axis? What is that now here? u sin theta, u sin theta and what is this now here? t. u sin theta and that is t. Okay plus 1 by 2. What is A along y axis? What is A along y axis? Minus G. So I will be taking it as minus G and this is what now here? T square. Let me take it as T square. Okay. What do I get now here? That will be is equal to U sin theta into T plus into minus minus half G T square and this will become equation number 2. Right. So this is the derivation. This is the mathematical. Okay. I'll be continuing this. One thing why what we need to understand this will come by practice. Understand the concept now you right. So if you understand the concept you can move along with the derivation now you right. Okay. This derivation will be asked for 5 marks. So the question will be asked like this. Derive, derive the expression for trajectory of a projectile or show that the trajectory of a projectile is a parabola. For that you need to draw this write the introduction and we will be continuing like this. This is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. Now, let me move forward now here, right? If it is like this, shall I take uh, uh, like this, let me take, continue with the derivation now here. From equation 1, from equation 1, what is equation 1? S equal to u cos theta into t, right? Okay, I will be taking like this. First, I will be finding what is the value of t now here, right? Okay, come on, tell me what do you get? X equal to u, what is that now here? Cos theta into t. Okay, come on, tell me what is t equal to now here? Shall I write like this? That implies t equal to, this term will come downward now here. What happens to t equal to? X divided by, what do I get now here? U cos theta. Understood? See here? T is equal to, this u cos theta will come to the denominator. So what do you will be get? T equal to x divided by u cos theta. That is t. So I got the value of t from equation 1. Now let me move on to the second equation. Right. Now let me substitute this. Substituting, substituting in equation 2. Okay, understood? Now we got uh, t value and I will be substituting the t uh, in equation number 2 now here, right? So what is equation number 2? This is the equation number 2. Okay. Let me substitute it. Y equal to, okay. Y is equal to, what is that equation? U sin theta. So let us say like this. U sin theta. Instead of T, I will be writing this term. What is that term? X divided by U cos theta. Understood? Instead of writing a T, I am writing X divided by U cos theta. Okay. What is that now here? Minus. Shall I take minus? There half is there. Let me take half. 
there is G. Okay, let me take G. Again, here there is T. Okay, instead of T, I will be writing X divided by U cos theta, what we say here, whole square. Simple, right? You got equation 1 and 2. So, from equation 1, you calculate what is the value of T and substituting in equation 2 now here, right? Okay, now, what, what we will be getting? U, U will get cancelled. And you know, what is sin theta by cos theta? Tan theta. You know that, right? The ratio of sin theta by cos theta is which theta? Tan theta. And this is what we say in here? X and minus half G. Shall I say like this? X square divided by U square cos theta square. So, you can take it as cos square theta. Do you understand? Cos theta whole square means cos square theta. Both are nothing but the same, right? Instead of writing like this, we can write like this also, right? So, the cos square theta. And this equation is called as equation of trajectory of a projectile. So, what is that equation? Tan theta x minus half g x square divided by u square cos square theta. And this is the equation for trajectory of a projectile. Okay, first understand. I have taken s equal to ut plus half at square since it is two dimension along x axis and along y axis. So, I have split x, s, u, u, x. After taking like this, I got equation 1. After completing this, I got equation 2. From equation 1, I got the value of t now here. I will be substituting that t in equation number 2. And we got this equation. And this equation is called as, uh, this is what we say, a projectile equation. Right? Equation of trajectory of a projectile. Right? And let me prove it is a parabola. Now, let me prove this. It is a parabola. To prove it a parabola, this equation, this uh, equation is of the form. This equation is of the form. Let me write this equation in one form now here, right? Okay. For, for example, let me write this equation in another form. So, what is that form? Y is equal to AX plus BX square. Is it that form? Let us check it out y is equal to ax plus bx square where a is equal to instead of a what is there now here tan theta where a is equal to tan theta means in, in place of tan theta shall I write a yes a and b is equal to where is b this is where is x square here is x square leaving x square I will writing all the terms what is that now here here minus so shall I take minus half what do I get now here g divided by u square cos square theta right okay simple see where a is equal to tan theta b is equal to minus half g u square cos square theta that i have written here right means if i substitute the value of a and substitute the value b i'll be getting like this so this equation this equation which is the equation of a parabola this equation is the equation of parabola and it is comparable to this equation that is why therefore what shall i conclude now here trajectory of a projectile projectile right trajectory of a projectile is a parabola right why parabola because it is similar to this equation always whenever an equation contains x and the second part will contains x square then that equation is called as a parabolic equation right since this equation is similar to that general equation of a parabola so trajectory of a projectile is a parabola this is how we need to conclude if the question is asked show that trajectory of a projectile is a parabola since this equation is similar to the equation of parabola so trajectory of a projectile is a parabola right so this is how we need to prove the path traced by a projectile is a parabola thank you